I think we are live. Hi, I am Kara. And I'm Joy. And we are Painted Bird. And we're going to just wait for a second for people to come on because I know that this is, you know, us just starting broadcasting and it needs to alert all of the wonderful scenes, followers and artists and artist representatives. Um, so I guess we can just kind of give a little chat about what we're gonna do today before we really get into it as we let people join our live stream. Joy, do you wanna explain a little bit about what's, what's going on today? Yeah, so we're Painted Bird and we're really excited to try StreamYard. This is our first StreamYard. And so we are a branding, marketing, and PR company. And we're here to break down the global sensation Taylor Swift's brand and also talk about how some of her tactics in branding could work for you too. It's true. Um, we love Taylor Swift and we really do see her uh, brand as such a masterclass in creative marketing and ways to engage with your super fans. So um, this is our first brand breakdown. Like Joy said, today we're breaking down Taylor Swift for those of you who are joining right now and just starting to, um, you know, to see what we're up to and how she uses creative branding to mobilize her massive fan base, as well as how you can do the same. So it's no doubt that Taylor Swift is one of the most successful singer songwriters and personal brands of all time. Of course, she undoubtedly has a massive team around her helping her to pull things off and a large marketing budget at this point. But some of her creative marketing and branding techniques date back to her very first album. And many are creative as opposed to incredibly costly. Oh, I was just going to say hi, Dawn. Hey, Dawn. And and oh hi. my gosh, we have some awesome people. Dawn, hi. I'm so excited that you're here because um, you're such a music supporter and you're so awesome. And I feel like uh, this will be so great for you to, to get to like get a peek behind the music industry a little bit. Hi, scenes. <laughs> I know this is fun that we can see comments because I don't know if we can see who is on. But we can see if you say hi. Yes, if you say hi and leave us a comment, and we could do a little Q&A at the end. But um, for those of you who don't know, Joy and I are both also artists. Um, we run a branding and marketing company because, as all of you know, that there isn't very much money in streaming anymore uh, as a musician, as an artist. You know, you have to get really, really creative because I think, Joy, you might be able to correct me on this stat, but it's like 0. 0.0006 cents per stream is made on Spotify or and something. That's like, like if, you're in the U if it's a U.S. stream. Yes, and that's if it's a U.S. stream. Uh, it's less if it's not. Um, so it's pretty crazy between having to split, you know, your proceeds with your other writers, your manager, your distribution company, taking a percent off the top end, uh, your producer, like most of the time, even if your song is incredibly, incredibly successful on these streaming platforms, it's very easy to still end up in the red. So it's important to come up with other creative revenue streams and also um, just other creative ways to engage a fan base because otherwise we're losing some artists and songwriters and people that just can't stay in this just the way that the current music industry model is. And a lot of people don't know that about the music industry as consumers, you know, because they're listening to music, they love music and that's great. Um, but a lot of Spotify and they think that that money is going directly to their favorite artists that they stream. Yes, they don't realize. And, and it's very so hard. They taking most of the money. They don't have to realize, right? And that's okay. Like if I wasn't, and you and I both weren't on the behind the scenes of the music industry, we wouldn't probably realize either. I would um, never know. I would never know. Yeah, you would never know. So, um, you know, that's why you're getting co songwriters and people going to Congress to fight certain things. So anyway, you know, artists have to get really creative these days, which brings us back to branding and creative marketing um, and, and why we started to get into this as artists, you know, for artists, because we saw such a need, you know, nowadays, artists need to be their own managers, their own branding, cre like brand creators, they, their own development team, they need to be their own marketing team and own publicists a lot of the time. Um, and so these labels are kind of just expecting you to have already done it all before they're willing to jump in and step in. And Joy, you could expand on that. But um, I think that there's a lot more 
a responsibility placed as exciting as all these opportunities are for artists these days and especially independent artists these days um there's a lot more responsibility from all hats placed on the artists now more than ever before would you agree with that absolutely it's like having your own startup your own company and so i think through painted board we're really hoping to empower other artists as well which is why we're doing this and why we're talking about taylor swift because as you were talking about with her first album you know and she still does today she implements tactics that cost little to no money and have a really high reward and mobilize her massive fan base and super fans for life so we're going to be talking about that today Yes, there are quite literally hundreds of examples of Taylor alone in her career spanning the last decade or so. But I think Joy and I today wanted to dive into a few that might spur some ideas for new artists that, you know, need to define their relationship with their fans and um, may have a limited budget and need to really get creative here to develop themselves as artists um, because no one is coming in and doing that for you anymore. You have to sort of have all your ducks in a row. So we're here to help. That's what Painted Bird is here for, to take our experience and uh, knowledge and expertise and convey that to you. And so, like I said, in our opinion, Taylor is a masterclass in branding. And I want to take us through her different phases. I might not be in the perfect order of her album releases. Trust me, I know when they came out, but I'm doing it in a strategic order for a reason. Um, going back to her first album, Taylor Swift. So Taylor would capitalize letters in the lyric booklets of her record uh, to convey secret messages to her fans. And you had to buy the physical album if you wanted to decode the message. Uh, these messages would include who the song was about at times or an image that would give you a clue back to a picture that might hint who the song was about. And she continued these messages all the way into her fifth album, even as she grew in popularity because her fans loved them so much. So I wanted to show you, um, we're gonna have a little bit of a slideshow just to show you some of what we're talking about. So I'm gonna share um, my screen with you right now so that you can, oh, where is it? Let me show you. has an awesome PowerPoint. I have a PowerPoint, I do. So I wanted to show you. Do you guys see this right now? <laughs> is, is there yeah. more? Can someone in the chat say yes so we know it's it's happening? Yes, can anyone, can everyone tell me so that you can see it? Tell me when we get a yes, Joy. I'm just gonna give you a yes, how about that? Okay, great. <laughs> Okay, so uh, what I just said, Taylor Swift, she would put, if you can look here on the left image of her 1989 booklet, you'll see that certain letters are lowercase, um, like the R in scars or the A in sad to the left hand side. And this was her way when you would read her lyrics because she's such a lyricist. She would want you to read the lyrics in the lyric booklet and she would want you to find those were those letters that were either lowercase or capitalized depending on how the style of the lyric booklet was written and each song contained a message so this right image here is her first album taylor swift self self-titled and these are the messages from the songs you know like should have said no track nine says sam 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 that was her way to let her fans know that should have said no was about sam <laughs> <laughs> um, very so yes so anyway she did that now you can go here this is her red album one of my favorite taylor songs um all too well oh, all too well it. incredible taylor song but as you'll see here because the style of the booklet was lowercase that the capital letters um are what provides the message and the message from her red album all too well was maple latte and if you were a taylor fan at the time of the red album you would know that taylor was spotted with jake gyllenhaal getting a maple latte uh and so that would be yes so without her you know letting you know publicly that this song is about jake gyllenhaal because she used the terms maple latte the fans that saw her out in those paparazzi pictures with jake gyllenhaal we'll know that maple latte is the clue that this song is about Jake Gyllenhaal. 
So anyway, that's just me giving you a little bit of an example. Um, I'm going to stop sharing it for now because we're going to get back to that at a different point. Um, yeah. But that's an, that's an example of, of that secret messages and something that you could maybe do, maybe not in that way, but in another way. Joy, you can take it from there. Yeah, I just think it's important to say that, you know, you could create secret, secret messages on social media to engage your fans or you know, or you may not be making secret messages for fans, but you could have an element of surprise in your marketing or your branding. And that's a helpful engagement tactic. I know you've done that, Kara, with your music. Um, I have done it. I didn't do it in the exact same way as Taylor, but on my last record, and Don, you might re remember this, that if you got the physical copy on the back hand side, um, certain letters were boldened of the the song titles to spell out let go which was kind of the overall message of my record life in rear view as an independent artist um so another thing for the speak now tour taylor would write a 13 her lucky number on her hand and then new song lyrics for each show on her arm and fans would break them down for secret messages so let's go back to our powerpoint i guess i really shouldn't have got uh taken us away from it because Apparently, I have a lot of PowerPoint slides, Joy and I, here to take <laughs> through. Um, yeah. But I wanted to show you kind of what, um, and are you guys seeing this page now that, that shows her on tour? Oh, I'm seeing, no, I'm, I'm still seeing her in a white dress. Is that the one? Oh, interesting. Mm, let's see. No, I don't know why it's not showing the other page, but um, let me see. Hold on. We're just here learning too. We are learning with you guys on, on how StreamYard works. So let me try sharing it again and see if we can get this to, um, yeah, to, to work here for us. I have it here. Let's try this. Sorry, guys. There's going to be a bit of uh, testing some things, even though we did test this. But, you know, it's technology, so you never know what's going to happen. Um, OK, so we're back here. Uh, do you guys now see the image that I'm talking about? She's on tour. She's got she's playing her guitar. Yes. OK, so yes. this is. This is just an example to show you guys, but 13 is Taylor's lucky number. So she would put that on her hand and then down her arm, she would write lyrics every tour. And oftentimes these lyrics were either by an artist that had performed, by an artist that was about to do like a secret show with her or somebody that she was writing about or that she was dating or whatever that she was trying to give you a secret clue about. This essentially allowed you as the listener to feel like you were Taylor's like BFF. You knew things that, you know, others didn't know if you knew to look out for that number and to look out for those lyrics. And so that was just another way that she took secret messages to a whole other level. Um, but there was also bonus contents on her physical CDs. So many of Taylor's physical CDs came with bonus songs that, um, and let me refer to this next slide. So as you'll see here, it'll say, it says on the right hand corner, my songwriting voice memos, I know places, I wish you would, blank space. So many of Taylor's physical CDs came with those songs that didn't make the record demos or voice memos of her writing the songs on the record and their beginning stages. And this helped Taylor establish her brand as a songwriter. You know, a lot of pop stars, a lot of artists, um, they don't always write their stuff. You know, some people have other writers come in and write and they're just singing it. And so Taylor wanted to establish I am a songwriter. She said it many times and that she said many times in her career that she knows that if she um, wasn't a songwriter, that she doesn't consider herself much of a vocalist. And she's constantly, consistently trying to remind you that she is a songwriter, that she wrote what you are hearing. And you're gonna see her do this in many creative ways. Yeah, absolutely. You know, expanding on the above, um, this goes into her showcasing, you know, behind the scenes videos of the making of the songs. I remember seeing that on Reputation when she would play and she'd just be on the keyboard writing the song and then stopping and then you'd see her cats. Yes, and yes. Remember, and then she'd be writing again. Um, but back to Speak Now, she wrote the entire third album alone without any other writers because she had criticism that she wasn't actually the ones writing it. And so she really wanted to prove that. So again, that brand of a singer songwriter comes up again and again. And she wanted, you know, people to know that she's involved in every aspect. Definitely. So 
Yeah, so I think it's good to talk about, you know, what defines you as an artist. Maybe it's not the songwriting. Maybe it's something else. Maybe you're a guitar player or, you know, maybe there's a cause that you care about. What makes you different? So, you know, with Taylor, she keeps saying, I'm a songwriter who wrote about boys. That was really her brand. I know for me, that was the first thing I would think of. How about you, Kara? Yeah, I think that's what drew me in initially because she, in her first record, she would like list guys' names in the songs. And, and that was not something that people were doing on like a mainstream level at that point. You know, she had her song where she was like, Drew said this, da, 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 da. And, and you knew that that was a real person because of the way that she'd established these secret messages and these things. You knew that that wasn't just like a code or, you know, a name that was used as like a stock name. Um, so that was something that she did. And every artist is different. Every artist is going to do it in their their own way. But it was interesting that that was how she uh, approached this, you know? Yeah. I mean, she really just pays attention to her fans and really surprises them in unexpected ways. And like you were saying, it makes fans feel like a best friend rather than the separation with this global superstar, maybe like Madonna's brand, you know, for example, so different. Right, and every artist is so different, like you said, like mm -hmm. uh, like a Beyonce or a Madonna, or like they, there are some, or a Lana Del Rey even, they do things very differently and they have a very different um, approach. And that's why you see these artists as very different types of artists. And a lot of it I do think is intentional. And I think it has to come from being authentically you and who you are. And I think that it's great to let fans in, in a way that, um, you know, like your fans are, are your friends in a way, like they're your people that listen to your music and they like love your messages and they connect with you and what you're writing on a level that, you know, the people that aren't maybe don't understand because you're, they're not on the same wavelength. So I think that tapping into that and understanding who your fans are and getting to know them as people is really, really important um, for an artist. And embracing that maybe you're not a Taylor Swift. I mean, she would bake cookies and have fans over to her house, you know? <laughs> and I yeah. think that's, that's amazing. But I don't think Beyonce would do that because that wouldn't be her brand. No, totally. And it would be really like maybe out of character of what she, what she, who she is as a real person, you know? Um, but it does, it takes you back to like even this slide and, and Joy, you could talk uh, or I guess I could say a little bit about this, but Swiftmas is like, you see the 12 days of Swiftmas here. Swiftmas is when Taylor would personally send gifts to fans for the holidays and they were personal and they were directly related to what the fan liked, nothing to do with her product and included personalized letters and messaging and treating them as you know, like I said, her friends and people that understood what she's saying and listen to her music and really connect to it rather than just like the typical, oh, like these are consumers, these are fans, these are whatever. She was really, this really goes back to Taylor's first album and her brand as everybody's best friend. And you can see that here um, where she's like, you know, giving items and surprising fans for Christmas. Um, that's what that photo really is. And here, um, Tay Lurking, you can see here in this bottom slide, she says, I'm loving seeing all the people buy 1989 in groups. They're having the most fun ever. Hashtag Tay Lurking. Tay Lurking was a word that she created to show that she was stalking her fans. And she was stalking them for these secret sessions, which you can see here. And you can see these photos that the, the fans had with her Grammys and the cookies from her Lover album. She would go, you know, her and her fan club, not just her, would go through fan accounts accounts and select fans after Tay Lurking and stalking them and invited them into their her homes from around the world, baking them cookies, playing her new records for them before they were released. And this would create, you know, these fans that honestly felt so like family to, and, and that feel like Taylor is their family because she has allowed them into her life and into her home in that way. I'm not saying that everyone should do that. I'm not saying that everybody should is that type of person that feels even comfortable having a group of people in their home. So it's different for everybody, but specifically for Taylor, this is what she did. And then fans would post about her 24 seven, hoping that they would be seen and invited to a secret session. And this created more organic grassroots growth, which was um, really different and smart and in a way that you hadn't really seen a pop star um, do before. Yeah. And I think it's, 
a good thing to think like, can you do something special, you know, surrounding your release to honor your supporters or your biggest fans? I know when I released Midnight, I had a meetup at Echo Park Lake and we all went out on the paddle boards and people wrote, oh, and we also had a party at Kara's house. <laughs> Remember, did have a party at my house, and they and, I still still me. and they were like, "That was the best night of my life." Like, yeah, they love your fans. Really love that. I even would get messages from fans still to this day, being like, "I remember when we came to your house to support to celebrate Joy's EP, and it was like the best night ever." And um, you know, so they you really loved it. Underestimate like how important do you know taking a day out of your life to do something like that can be for that connection and that bond yes I completely agree and I think it's really special and it's different um okay what was what were you saying oh yeah you know um can you do something special surrounding a release to honor your biggest supporters or, or fans like Joy was saying do you want to expand on that yeah like so it could be something different for you know every person maybe it's writing some personalized letters or doing a meetup or, you know, doing a live stream where you take someone's favorite requested song or you change the lyrics for them. Um, but there's so much you could do. And I know, Kara, you've done so much with your fans and you even named your fans or they named you, I would say, rather. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. you, say it. you were on a stream um, supporting my album Life in Review. And, and we were kind of joking about like different names for the fan base. And I was, it was like, oh, the Care Bears or the Carrots. And then somebody wrote in and wrote, you know, was replying in the messaging boxes and was like, what about the Carakeets? And it just kind of was a really fun thing to me because I would have never thought of the Carakeets. Like that was, that's too clever and creative for me, but they came up with this, you know, this one uh, fan of mine came up with that term. And um, so then I was joking, signing off being like, well, call like everybody, we have to do this thing. And it's just fun because it's real and it's true. And like that, you know, it created this really fun inside joke and inside thing that I love having with these supporters and, and um, these people that I like feel like truly do understand me and understand my music and what I'm, you know, like what my lyrics are saying and what I care about. Like they, they love the music. So they must care about those things too. Um, and so then it expanded where like, now I really think about the Karakeets and I'm, I'm like, because those are the people that truly love what I'm doing and get what I'm trying to say and my messages. And so I'm going to um, cater my merch line to them and I'm going to cater events to like the, the Karakeets. I'm going to come up with creative ideas for releases around the Karakeets because I know that, um, that yeah, we're in on, we, we all kind of get why it's that we're in on it. It's going to be, you know, they're going to understand why I feel a certain way and what I'm doing. And so I think there's ways to pay attention when your fans say something or do something and that you have a connection in that moment to take that and make something bigger of it. And, and I think that's always a really fun thing to do. Yes. And I would just say I got a sneak peek at some amazing Karakeet merch coming up. <laughs> Can't yeah. wait. But back to Taylor, you know, she really makes a moment or an era out of every single release. And she does, if you notice, each album is a brand refresh. Her outfits change, her makeup changes, her hair changes, the aesthetic, the visual language, the marketing approach changes. You know, she makes the music and then works outwards from there. So it's that sort of idea, okay, this is the music, if that's true, what else is true? Um, what do the rest of the world look like? Yeah, it's great, I love that. And I think it's such a fun thing. That's something I've always, you know, not every artist does that. Some artists brand is to stay the same. You know, they love the consistency. They love, um, like if we were to break down a different artist on here, which maybe we will do at some point, there, it's a different approach, you know, maybe theirs is, is that tried and true and like you're always know what you're going to get with me and I'm never going to change and, you know, and that's great too and some fans and some music listeners love that. For myself, I've always found it really exciting that every record I like don't exactly know where Ta Taylor is going, but I know she's going to take me somewhere exciting. And um, and that she's going to have thought about it and that she puts that kind of level of detail because I love detail and and <laughs> Joy's like, yeah, I know. There it is, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this was especially epic. And let me change the slide here. 
when mm -hmm. Taylor combined all of her former selves, personalities, brands, whatever you want to call it, really, um, into the Look What You Made Me Do video, which fans went nuts over. She declared her past selves dead and brought all of her brands into one music video, um, which was like mind blowing to me as someone. The who, ending of that video. Like, yeah. I don't even know, like as someone who had, fo had followed Taylor since the very first record, and I truly mean that, I've been an early adopter. <laughs> um, really before anyone really like knew who Taylor was, uh, seeing all of these like styles that I had followed along with and like personalities that she, I don't even know that, I don't want to even want to say she adopted, but that was who she was in that moment. I think she's being authentic to who she was and bring them into one, I one video. It was very interesting. You can even see this is where like all her past selves are like falling as she declares herself dead at the bottom here. Um, but when Taylor changes up her brand, she commits to it fully. She does not take a middle ground or try to maintain some of this last image because people liked it. Her core brand always remains the same and consistent. I do believe because that is who she is at the core, you know, relatable, confessional, hooky, um, all of that, which is important for that consistency. But the setting around those values were expressed in very different ways and will change drastically. And her fans have come to love that and expect that and to look forward to a new quote unquote era, because like a surprise, you don't know what to expect. And it's it's really fun. Yeah, but I think your point is so good that it all stems from the same core values. And that's why we trust and love her personal brand. And it stems from what the record is about. You know, I always think of 1989 and the 80s sound and the aesthetic that matched that. And then folklore in the woods with the, you know, acoustic instruments and made in isolation and shooting a video in a cabin um, for Disney+. Plus. So, you know, your, does, your brand doesn't have to be as direct. And some, you know, sometimes she's very on the nose. But it's really good to use it as a way to start thinking about your brand. You know, what does your music sound like, feel like, taste like? And work from there to craft your story and your visual identity. And that's actually what we help you with at Painted Bird. It's true. Yeah. And, you know, she lets her work do the talking. Um, <laughs> when she, like when she, everyone called her a serial dater and then she came out with blank space and she just wrote from that point of view and she's like, yeah, so if I was this person here, I am. Yeah, that was really clever. I thought that was a really fun oh, moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. and also going back to our slide here, can you guys still see this? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm just assuming we can, um, uh, coming here, uh, do you guys, I don't know, you know, it depends how familiar you're familiar you are with Taylor and her work, but. Uh, at one point, something happened and she was called a snake all over the Internet. And she kind of took a year off and completely disappeared from the public eye. And when she came back, the first image that you she cleared out her whole Instagram um, account. This was before she declared very dramatic. Yeah. It was very dramatic for her. Um, and this was before she had declared her past selves dead. So it made sense once you found out later. But at first, you just saw a complete blank slate. And the first thing you saw from the reputation release was the snake in this, if you see on this left-hand corner here. She posted, um, I believe it was three squares, and it was this video of just this snake moving. And that was it. And that was how you knew new music was coming. Um, and so she kind of owned this fact that people were calling her this like manipulative, deceiving, quote unquote, snake. And she called her own. She was like, OK, if I'm a snake, then I'm a snake. And she made a whole brand out of it, which is obviously, it. Yeah. Yeah, it's obviously an extreme. Not everyone's going to do that. And not every artist should do that. But it's an example of what Taylor did. Um, and, you know, you can see she really owned that snake thing. This is her on the right hand corner um, in the right hand corner on Reputation Tour. You see how many snakes are there like on this tour that she's, you know, dancing around. I think she brought it to the AMAs when she did a performance like she was really on owning this um, snake thing. Another example was when a key critic who had, you know, been a follower of her and was like kind of a semi supporter um, early on, I guess called said that she couldn't sing after she had flubbed a performance at the Grammys with Stevie Nicks. 
And so she came out with a song on her next record called Mean, uh, which was, you know, mentioning in the lyrics that this person would be drunk and rambling on about how she can't sing. And uh, she performed it then at the Grammys. And when that moment came where she said, you know, drunk and rambling on about how I can't sing, there was this huge pause and a moment of like, oh my gosh. And then she's like, but all you are is mean and keep singing this song. She, um, yeah, she's like, you know, she's really never been afraid to like call people out. And that's just another example of how she's created a brand and an identity and used it in her music. And been very successful. I mean, she, you know, she won the Grammy this year and she's the only female artist to have won three albums of the year in history. That's just incredible. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so wild, right? Yeah, I really love folklore and her dress and the little house in the prairie sort of vibe that she's rocking and the braids. Yes, um, totally, total different. <laughs> Like total 180 from Reputation, which we were just talking about, like who really would, different this, yeah. this thing suddenly would turn into this like, you know, cabin in the woods thing. Yeah. And she, again, another really clever marketing strategy with her lead single, Cardigan, and then the merch line that she dropped the same day. Yeah, I'm gonna pull it up. Do you have a slide of that? Yes, I'm about to pull that up right now. Awesome. Yeah, and you can see that she actually gifted the cardigans to all of her celebrity friends. And so it worked really great to promote the music and, of course, the aesthetic of the album. Yeah, you know, obviously we don't all have celebrity friends <laughs> to gift our well, merch. I have you, Kara. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I will certainly repost it with the little uh, song playing at the top like Kaya Gerber did here. <laughs> No, but honestly, you know, we don't all have celebrity friends to gift our merch to, but word of mouth does start small. And it's really important, like this kind of grassroots style. Like I said, there's not a lot of money in certain aspects of the music industry right now. And um, you, people don't realize how expensive it is to break a song and also how little money comes from, like I said, those streams. And really merchandise and touring are like the two ways for an indie artist to make or an artist in general really at this point in time to make some money as, as well as like licensing tv film sync um but right now with covid and everything shut down on the touring front um merch is like really the place and that's where it's at so it was really smart for her to do this um but you could do it too like what about something relevant that's sent to your immediate circle or your fans. Like it was really smart because it wasn't a giant ad or a billboard and yet it got posted everywhere um, with people just enjoying wearing their cardigans. You know, as you can see here, here's Halsey, um, this Kelsey Ballerini here, who's a big country artist. These are two models here in the corner. Taylor's wearing the cardigan. Uh, this is Fletcher in the right hand corner. Who's another pop artist, Nina, a peer pop artist. Um, and then I forget this man's name. Do you know his name, Joy? He's on Queer Eye. Um, he's really funny. I think his name's Jonathan. I don't know, but he's a funny guy. Um, honestly, so you see all these people are reposting it. It's a really subtle and genius marketing move that, you know, allowed her to make money off the merchandise, um, which, like I said, as an artist these days, obviously Taylor is kind of an exception to this rule, but that's where artists are making their living these days. Um, is, you know, fans went to go buy their own cardigan is all I'm saying to join in on the frenzy. So I want a cardigan. Yeah, I want a cardigan <laughs> now. Like, why don't I have a cardigan? Yes. Um, I'm like, damn, I don't, I need a cardigan in my life. So anyway, um, yeah, going back to what Joy was saying, you know, you could do something like that. You could name your fan base, you know, you could let your fan base name themselves, but if you want to, I'm sure they would be happy for you to name them too, because it gives like really fun, creative, like things to post about creative art for fan music fans to create and make, um, come up with a really fun slogan. It can unite your army. It can give you, you can feel united as a family, which is what I think a fan base right. really is people that love your music or love your artist's music if you're an artist rep representative like that's like a per music is so personal and it's such a real connection if someone understands what you're saying what you're writing about and so i think honoring that and, and expanding on it and creating that family is is really the way to go um listen i mean there are a zillion more lessons from taylor alone but these are just some of the creative ways that can be adopted and adapted to like almost any level of artist 
Absolutely. And, you know, I think it's just important to note, we are talking Taylor, but these can be scaled down and incorporated into your brand as an up and coming or independent artist and work really well. And your ideas, they're going to be different than Taylor's because you're unique and you are different. And so it all stems from your own unique brand and your own unique brilliance. Um, but you can see how small and cost-effective ideas can really rile up devotion from your fan base. And, <laughs> you know, so anyways, we would love to help you. So I know this is kind of shameless self-promotion, but we do run a branding and marketing company called Painted Bird, where we do just that. And so you can feel free to check out our website and hit us up for a brand assessment or a strategy. And I think we'd also just like to stay in right now and see if you have any questions that you would like us. To yeah, that's a great idea, Joy. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody's on here that has any questions or if there are any big, um, oh, thank you, Charles. This is really nice. Sorry, I'm, I was looking at the, the slideshow, so it, it's hard for me to see all the comments, but good insights and material not often found elsewhere. Thank you. That's that's yeah. really awesome. You know, we really do just want to help indie artists because like we said, we know how hard it is as indie artists to break through, make noise, um, to make money, to like, you know, it is, it's, you have to kind of do it all yourself these days as a new artist. So um, this is something that we have a lot of fun doing as artists. Like Joy and I have always loved studying these ideas and, and creative ideas and coming up with this. And so we were like, why don't we help other artists do the same um, who need some support in this area because they don't have a team coming up with these ideas as maybe some of these other big artists like Taylor Swift do at certain points in their careers. I'm not saying that Taylor didn't come up with a lot of these ideas. Like I do think she's a creative genius in some ways, but anyways, um, but I do think she had support. She had help. She had, if she had, you know, if this is true, what else is true? And people spitballing and coming up with ideas and also people to help her execute some of this. So we do have to be aware of that, but um, that's what Joy and I are here for. You know, we want to be your, devote a partner in this journey and help you with it because we feel like these are skills that we've learned um, through trial and error and that we can really help others. Um, Charles, what's the company name again? Our company is called Painted Bird. Um, we could even just put so many new songs always coming out, but it's the little things that really get a fan hooked on the artist. Don, awesome. thank you for adding. See, um, that's what I was hoping. You know, I was like, if there's fan music fans in here, if there is uh, art, our artists or artist representatives, any kind of insight or feedback or questions or things that you want to add as that you've noticed as a fan um, would be really helpful and beneficial to anyone listening to this. Um, Charles, I was gonna just link you to um, right now. I was thinking I could link you to our website so that you could see it. Um, hold on one second. I will put it in the comments box here. One sec, one sec. Um, so that you can see our website, Charles, if you're still on here. Um, we do some partnership promo. Oh, I think I part, yeah. Oh, see? Awesome. There we go. So um, you should see that there. We do some promos with Scenes because we've been partnering with them. It's thank you so much to Scenes for yes, absolutely for having us here and for um, hosting this event. It's an incredible platform for artist discovery and also for you know fans to come and listen to music and artists to perform. So we're really grateful to everyone at Scenes and to Harold for um, for supporting Painted Bird and for, for having us. We love them so, so very much and they're great to artists. Um, yes, thank you, Harold. Can you put a link of the company? Yes, Liana, Leanna, I hope I'm not butchering your name, but do you see, um, do you see oh, this? Does it not work? I, I hope, know, I think we might have just chatted it to you, Kara. Oh, really? Because I don't know how to. Well, can you guys tell me if you're seeing our website link? Because that would be great. I just posted it and our our page is uh, at Painted Bird. Let me show you. Let's see if I can add this here. So you guys can share the screen and just show, show them. Um, let's see. Facebook.com slash Painted Bird. This should take you there. Oh, no, maybe not. 
Well, tell me if you guys, yeah, we could just take you to share the screen and show you guys. Um, I'm gonna show them the page, yeah. Um, yeah, we, why not? So tell us if that Facebook, yes, the link showed up in the chat. Thank you, Don. Things like this on, on live streams where you directly in, interact with individual fans builds that one-on-one -on -one connection. It's hard to get that direct show. Yeah, and I love the one-on-one -on -one connection. Like I know as an artist, um, I, it means a lot to me to be able to one-on-one -on -one connect with my fans and Absolutely. Um, to get to have that relationship with them. And I'm a really big advocate for that. You know, I know not all artists can be like that or want to be like that. And that's that's okay. Like everybody's different, but to me, it's something that's important. So, um, yeah, let's try to show you guys. I'm going to see if I can take you through, um, the plot, the website here. Let's see if it'll show up. Um, tell me if you guys see this one second, I'm going to stop sharing this and share something else. So one sec. Share screen, let's do it. Okay, do you guys see the website now? I'm gonna make it, you should see everything. So this is our website, A Painted Bird. You know, we say branding, marketing, PR, because we also do a few other things as well, not just branding, although it is our passion. Yes, yeah, absolutely, our favorite thing to do. Yeah, so, you know, we, we this is our about. You could come back and look at this, but we basically just say that as artists ourselves, we really understand firsthand how hard you work, which is true. I really do feel artists are some of the most dedicated people on the planet, putting their whole heart and creative energy into their projects. And so we feel that we need to do the same and approach each client as an individual and work as hard as you've worked to get the music out there in the world. So we talk about that and what we do, um, you know, here, Joy, you could, you could take some of this away so that you, you yeah. So here are some of the success stories so far. Um, we've gotten content and artists in billboard and rolling stone and Kara and I were both on the first round Grammy awards ballads and, LA Weekly and Parade and Scenes, of course. <laughs> yes, yeah, Scenes, number one here. Yeah, so scenes, yes. Um, yes, you know, and some of this was from our PR company where we've, you know, pitched uh, songs that we've loved uh, to press contacts and gotten some cool looks and press in these different areas. Um, and also branding, we've created some of the brands and, and the lyric videos and the uh, visual content that has ended up on some of these platforms. And then here are our services. You know, we like we say here, all our services are a la carte and they're in alignment with your unique brand and personalized message. And that's where I think Joy and I are different than other companies is that we really approach this from the truth. Um, the brand really comes from the music and who you are first and foremost. None of this in my mind is completely built up and um, fabricated and m I don't believe in like making a person from scratch and trying to make what fits the market or whatever. We're really listening to like who you are, what do you want to say, who are you really and what is important to you. And so we do every single service on here with that in mind. And um, we also break down if you want to learn more about our branding, our creative marketing or our PR um, campaigns, you can click on learn more for a video. Yes, but we we made videos about more about what we do. We made, yeah, we made videos about these services. And Joy, do you want to talk about any of these other services we do or any aspect of, of this? Yeah, I mean, it really just stems from the brand. Because once you have a really authentic brand, um, then it's easy to get into creative marketing strategies or to do PR. Um, we also do copyright writing for websites or social media and, you know, strategy and consultation. Um, we work with Jack and other um, graphic designers that we can refer you to. And so if you need album covers or single covers or website and just all sorts of, you know, social assets, I mean, all these things that artists need, but it's really hard when you don't, you know, like I said, we're expected to be these entrepreneurs that can do everything, that can create graphics, that can create videos, that can do social posts, that can market. And like, it's not always realistic for us to be able to do all of these things, like to have all of these skills that would be tough as one person. So we're trying to really come from who you are and your brand. And that's like what Joy said, that's how we decide your graphic design or how, you know, with who we think could do that, or that's how we figure out the covers. It all comes first from the music, which comes to who you are and also then what your brand is in alignment with that. 
Mm -hmm. And if you're interested um, in seeing a sample branding package, then um, you can email us and we through our website, we can send that your way. Yes. And we also help with some video ideation, like certain music videos that we've done branding for and creative ideas for have landed on um, Huffington Post and other big press air ideas. And we find creative ways that don't always require a huge budget. Like, for example, um, with this one artist, he didn't have a music video budget, but he wanted a music video because he knew that that was a way to show who he was. And his album was all about, you know, taking risks, taking chances, like this is the day, today's the day to do it. So for the video, Joy and I were like, well, why don't you, know, you don't have a budget, why don't you go skydiving? Because right. you, get, yeah. you can you can add, it's a, cheap, it's a lot cheaper to skydive than it is to create a music video and pay a whole team and pay all their food for the day or three days or whatever it is. Why don't you go skydiving and um, you can always add on the video footage with your purchase because they offer that as, you know, hey, if you went skydiving, if you want to, you know, if you want a video of you skydiving, add it on. Um, so he did that. He added on the video. He cut it together and eventually put that out as his music video being like, look, I was so afraid to skydive. It was like something he was really afraid to do. He decided to do it for his living life out loud, taking a chance, which was all in alignment with who he really was, what his message was, what he really cared about. And it ended up getting some big premieres um, and some big looks. So that's an example of how we can come up with creative ideas that have to do with your message and your music that don't actually necessarily require thousands upon thousands of dollars of a budget. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. Lyric videos, animation, video editing, all of that, we, we have ways to do all it. All things that artists have to do. It's pretty incredible, right? It's so crazy. This is all the stuff artists and more that artists have to do. But um, And then this is just a little bit about me, a little bit about Joy, a little bit about Jack. And um, this is our contact us form if you want to send us an email. So you can get 20% off of your first service or package when you mention you found us on scenes, which you did here. Um, so feel free to send us a message if you want us to, you know, if you want to talk about what we can do, if you want to quote, if you want to see a sample branding package, or if you're interested in any of those services that we just listed, we're here for you. We're really passionate, like I said, about helping independent artists um, because we know firsthand how hard it is and how hard you guys work. So that is us. That's us at Painted Bird. Joy, I don't know if you have anything else that you want to add here. Just thank you so much for tuning in and we look forward to hearing from you. Yes. Thank you for tuning in. I hope we hope you learned something um, about Taylor <laughs> and also us. We think she's so brilliant, but we also know that you guys as artists out there are also super brilliant and can be just as creative. So um, amazing how much an independent artist needs to know. Yes, it's, there's more than you guys even realize, and it's it's a lot to do. So, and it changes yeah. all the time too, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. That's another example. Of bringing it back to Taylor really quick before we wrap. She, as you can see, she she kind of moved with the times too of like what she decided right. to do for certain things, like whether she was leaving secret, like for 1989, she, before the drop of the whole album, she like wrote out different lyrics um, for each track in different creative ways on Instagram, because that was like really big at the time. And then, you know, she kind of pays attention to the, the media outlets that are currently big and incorporates it into her strategy in a really creative way. So, you know, that's just another little Taylor nugget to end with, but, um, you two are brilliant artists too. Thank you, Don. Don, you're my favorite. I seriously, love Don so much. The best human on the planet. Um, next, Thank Taylor. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Um, this was really fun. And um, yeah, I think yeah. Reach out if you have any if you have any thoughts or if you have any questions. And thank you to Scenes for having us, too. Thank you again, Scenes. We can't wait to be on here again. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a great night.